Michael, Jonah, it is so lovely to meet you both. I want to start this, first of all, just by heaping on the praise. This is going to sound like hyperbole, but I genuinely felt awestruck in moments while watching this. Oh, As a you. fan of the <laughs> franchise, I was just like, I cannot believe how effectively you nailed the smallest details and also the tone of the game. So oh, thank you. kudos you to both of you for absolutely killing it. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. One of the things as a longtime fan of the franchise that I have always appreciated mm -hmm. about it is that historically it was one of the first games that allowed same sex romance. Mm. I'm curious, you got to craft this world in California, no less. Where does queerness fit into your world of, of Fallout, Jonah? I, I think it's I think it's embedded into the DNA of the franchise from the beginning and, and hopefully the show. Um, I, I think it's it, it's one of the one of the things that I found so exciting about the games when I played them, and I, my first experience with the franchise was in Fallout okay. Three, was the fact that they felt alive, subversive, satirical. That you you had a real sense there was nothing safe or restrained about these things. That they they felt that they had the texture of the world with them, um, and we've we've endeavored to try to bring that all of that feeling, all of that tone uh, with us into, into the series. The ability to kind of balance those disparate tones, it feels impossible on the page. And yet somehow that absurdity and the, the wit, and then also the, you know, the darker elements really do come through. And I think all of those are very much embodied in your character, Michael. I, I love him. He's so mysterious. And I feel like he speaks in some ways to the unknown, like the way that un the unknown is a part of the Fallout uh, experience. Um, and Fallout has always been so good about using characters and archetypes to kind of speak to larger statements about human nature. I'm curious, through that lens, what do you feel like your character is saying? Well, I think you've hit on most of what I think about it, which is he, here we are, mere humans, we're in these unfathomable circumstances, danger and wonder and desperation, and I'll try to put some of my understanding of it into words. Uh, in, in the service of someone uh, younger or more lost than myself. I do love the dynamic between you, your character and Lucy's character and those, those it brings out different parts of her that I found really fascinating. Um, I also <clears throat> feel like this is funny and occasionally gory, which I love. Um, there's something <laughs> incredibly timely about the series and maybe yeah. that's true always, but it just hit a little different in 2024 as we're living sort of through these chaotic times. I'm curious, well, film, and TV do not have to be prescriptive or didactic. Is there something yeah. that each of you hope that maybe audiences will maybe t uh, take away from the series um, in these times? Yeah, I, 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 I so agree with you. I, I think I, I've always been so wary of trying to, to, to or imagining that I have any wisdom to share with the audience. I feel like I'm as confused, <laughs> as confused by life uh, as many of us feel. Uh, and, and especially with this show, we started, I had my first sit down with Todd Howard in 2019, which feels like three apocalypses ago, at least. And, and I think sadly, the show, the show in 2019, some of the concerns of the show felt almost retro. Uh, and now sadly, they all, they all feel uh, entirely too relevant. I think one of the things, it's funny, one of the questions we've been asked, uh, you know, what, what would you need to survive the apocalypse? And I think maybe one of the so I don't, I don't have a lot of answers, but maybe some questions. But one of the things that I would take from, from that, my answer to that question of what I would need to survive the apocalypse, which I think is such an important part of the games, is not a, a shovel or a towel or a, or a bottle of water, but community. This is one of the things that I was struck by by the, by the very the first time I played Fallout, is it's not necessarily about the end of the world. It's about the beginning of a whole bunch of new worlds, different worlds. And kind of in the absence of the cultural hierarchy, you know, being smashed to pieces along with everything else, people get a chance. And this speaks a little bit, I think, to your to your first question about queerness, that within this within this universe, with, within this this kind of new world, a blank slate, that people get to chart their own course. 
and that these communities get to reassemble themselves with their own set of rules, um, which I think in a way to me speaks to the threat of optimism that runs through the games. You know, it's, it's not the zombie apocalypse. It's about if, if, if the world goes away and we have a chance to build a new one, what does that world get to look like? I love that. Anything to add, Michael, before? Like he said, I think collapse and decay are the facts of life, and the uh, our only available response is to survive, and that we need a sense of humor to be survivors, because d despair won't serve. Mm, I think that's really powerful. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. This has been amazing. I've seen the first half and I cannot wait to see the second half because oh, it is you. fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much. That's so kind of you.